Hello everyone. Today we are here to learn about structural steel elements detailing, particularly with bracket connections and column bases. First, we'll take up bracket connections. In your design of uh, steel elements uh, theory subject, you might have heard about bracket connections. You might have seen bracket connections and designed them also. This is generally given to take care of loads that come on from the girders onto the collar. So in a way this is a beam collar joint. Now here this is your bracket plate and these are the bolts which are used to connect your bracket plate to the column here. Now we will see how it is actually used. This is how a bracket connection would look. This is our column. This will be our bracket plate. And there will be one bearing plate which is kept on top of this uh, bracket plates which will house the beam. The beam will come and transfer onto the bearing plate like this. So the load transfer will be happening from the beam to the column. Now here this can be either bolted or welded connections. Now when you are doing bolted connections as you have done for the earlier ones, you should be considering your pitch and the edge distances and then you have to design your uh, number of bolts. So let's move on with our presentation. First we will take up bolted connections. You might get a question like this, you might be asked to design a bracket connections as you are very well versed with it. The eccentric loading as well as the eccentricity will be mentioned with which you will have to design the bolts. Uh, generally bolt diameter also would be specified. If it is not specified you are welcome to assume it. Now in this connect in this question you see that there is an eccentric loading of 150 kN which is acting at an eccentricity of 300 mm from the column center and using a 15 mm uh, plate we are supposed to design a bracket connection the column is ISWB 300 and the uh, specifications of the column is given you can refer to your steel tables that can also be used to have the specifications if it is not mentioned in your question now moving on this is how your bracket connection would look like this has been uh, designed for the given question and we have already drawn it. Now, as you see this is the first one, this is the first drawing where you see the column ISWB the, uh, from the top view. Now because the web is hidden it has to be shown in a broken line and the flange is seen here hence you can see it as a continuous line. Now when the bracket plate is fitted on top of this column you will see that the end edge of the flange is hidden hence this becomes a broken line all these considerations have to be given when you are drawing either in your uh, AutoCAD or manually all these will be specified all these will be identified and marks might be cut if you are not mentioned there now coming to number of bolts so it has been uh, calculated and seen that this many number of bolts are required and the edge distance was worked out to be 50 mm. Now the pitch was afterwards div uh, divided with uh, I think it is around yeah, 75 mm was the pitch fixed. Now coming to the edge of this, this is left with another 75 mm. So once you have the bracket plate, you will be able to fix this. You might be you, you can give either the edge distance here as 50 mm itself, or you can go with one more pitch that is also fine so this becomes the overall depth of your uh, plate and this becomes the width of your plate now there is one more uh, peculiar thing that you might see here we have chamfered this or we have tapered the gusset plate uh, sorry bracket plate this is done to save your material nothing else even if you leave it out as a completely straight member it is not wrong but since steel sections are supposed to be very economic, uh, very costly, it is always better to save on the material as and when you can. Now, this is the front view. If 
front elevation where you can see the column and on top of it you have the uh, bracket plate and the bolt holes are seen here so when you are seeing from this end just the bolt holes can be represented with all the circles along with the dimensions of the pitch and the edge distances whereas when you come to the side view or the top view you will have to show them in this fashion that is the bolt as well as the nut and the threading uh, shaft now <coughs> coming to the second one that is the side elevation here you will see the entire depth of the column along with the flange thickness the web thickness will not come into picture but then you will see the either either side there are the uh, base plates or the bracket plates and these lines indicate the position of your bolt now here just to si uh, save time the bolt has been missed here you are supposed to show this even here understood now this 375 is the total depth of the plate here that you have already fixed that you have already fixed so once this uh, depth is fixed then you have the thickness you can show it here exactly the same way on the opposite side also now you are supposed to mention all the dimensions whether it is the thickness of the flange or the overall thickness or the clear thickness of the web everything has to be mentioned when you come down to the top view that is this third figure you see that i sections are generally having the tapered flanges now in exam you are uh, free to do so that is show a tapered section along with the curves here at the turning points or else you can draw it straight away as a rectangular section to save time both are fine both are acceptable now here all the dimensions are mentioned in mm so this 300 mm is the overall depth of your column section that is iswb 300 and 15 mm is the plate thickness this is the top view this first one is your a uh, side elev uh, front elevation second one is your side elevation third one is your top view now i have just drawn this uh, grid work just to show how the dimensions of bolt has to be specified in your drawing okay moving on next we come to our welded connections in bracket connections instead of bolt we can use our welding so you all know how to calculate the length of weld required for transferring the same load so this darkened portion is your weld generally we use fillet welds for uh, connecting members here butt welds are also used this can be a viva question where do, where do you use butt weld or where do you use your fillet weld now similarly as as you have seen in your uh, bolted connection you will be able to see here that the edge of the that is a flange which is hidden by the bracket plate is shown in the broken line now here web has not been shown but you are supposed to mention it also so let's go back to the question now so here i have used the same column that is iswb 300 uh, from the bolted connection only thing is the eccentric load has been increased and the position of the load is not mentioned from the center of the column instead it is shown from the edge of the column and it is supposed to be 150 mm same 115 mm plate has been used so there was to draw front and side elevations and showing the details of the weld so let's come to the drawing <coughs> here you observe the iswb column this is a column uh, that is 300 mm depth the overall depth can be shown here now you observe the bracket plate comes up to the 2/3 of your uh, flange now this can be done just to satisfy the length of the weld it can be stopped at half but it can also be run up to the end of the flange this all depends on your length of the uh, leg weld 
now generally in your exam if you are given a question like this and if you are not asked to calculate the design you can run it up to more than half of it like let's say two third of it and show it as a fillet well and you can be done with it unless you are asked for exact uh, design that is showing the length of the exact well you need not have to bother about it much so rest all remains the same even in the this is the first image where you see the front elevation then the second image where you see the side elevation third image where you see the top view in the first one you see that instead of bold we have welds and uh, the entire weld is darkened ok uh, this is the front elevation then coming to the side elevation you see that this edges that is the junction of the edge of the <coughs> bracket plate and the column is shown as a fillet weld fillet weld is usually shown by a triangle a darkened triangle as you can see here you need not have to show the entire length of the column using just the broken uh, break you can show the whatever is the necessary details and all the dimensions have to be mentioned there is no leaving out any mention dimension not even the thickness of the flange or web wherever it is applicable so coming to the top view as i told you for uh, bolted connection the profile of your eye section flanges can be made rectangular in exam it's not necessary that you have to show a tapered section but while showing the uh, weld you are not supposed to show anything else other than a triangle for the fillet weld the thickness of the weld has, uh, has to be mentioned here if it is 8 mm or 10 mm fillet weld the thickness has to be clearly mentioned in this so this completes our bracket connections next we will move on to column bases so mainly in column bases we have two types in column bases we have two types one is the slab base and the second one is the bezet base slab bases are used when we have a column which is mainly predominantly carrying axial loads and does not undergo any type of bending or out of plane bending or buckling Gusset bases are used to give more stiffness and it is considered to be a rigid joint where the column is uh, likely to experience out of plane bending or buckling and along with axial loops. A rough sketch of slab base and gusset base has been shown in the next one. So here in slab base you observe this is your column section which is sitting on a base plate which in, in is in turn sitting on a concrete pedestal or concrete base. Now here there are two types of angles possible that is used to fix your column to the base plate and in turn the concrete pedestal. One is the cleat angle then the other one is the web cleat angle that is fixed to the web of the column. Now your question might mention whether you have web cleat angle or just cleat angle. When it is mentioned only as cleat angle it is given along the flange of your column section flange of your column section and the number of bolts again has to be calculated considering your edge and pitch distances <coughs> then coming to gusset base gusset base as you see here in this side uh, elevation we have this is the column then this this two things are your gusset plate these are your angles stiffener angles or gusset angles this is your web cleat angle so you you observe when you compare slab base and gusset base just by looking at it you feel that gusset base is more rigid the column does not have more uh, freedom to move around it is uh, designed for the same reason that it has to be made rigid whenever there is bending there is a likelihood chance that your column might move out of plane and it will cause failure in your bottom most portion so the load transfer does not get completed and hence there can be failure of your structure to avoid that wherever you have a column which is experiencing moments and all we use gusset bases so we will see each of them separately first we will take up column base so the question might look like this the dimensions of a concrete block can be shown along with the concrete uh, along with the column of uh, the steel section 
then the base plate thicknesses and the dimensions can be mentioned cleat angle and web cleats also are mentioned here so cleat angle is used to fix your flange of the column to your base plate web cleats are used to fix your web to the web of the column to your base plate again you have to calculate uh, the number of bolts <coughs> here 20 mm die is used now in uh, slab base we come across something called as anchor bolts so we will see this what anchor bolts are all in a short while <coughs> so this is how a drawing of your uh, slab base would look like here we have both web cleat angle here particular web cleat angle and the cleat angle mentioned here this is the front elevation and this is the side elevation now both of them are interchangeable it is not it is not that uh, this is uh, one and two have to be in the same way that is when you are seeing the web it has to be front elevation or when you are seeing the flange it has to be front elevation there is no hard and fast rule like that you are free to choose it <coughs> the number of bolts again you have to calculate for both of these cleat angles then your column will directly sit on the base plate and it is held together by both cleat angles that connect the flange and the web cleat angles which connect the web to the base plate now this is the base plate connection now this base plate has to be anchored into your concrete because steel and concrete sitting on top of it there might be a chance that it can slip out so we use something called as anchor bolts now these are anchor bolts there are many different types of anchor bolts these are the cast in situ that is uh, when the concrete pedestal is being poured these uh, anchor bolts are embedded inside your concrete uh, for the required uh, spacing with required spacing and all of the required diameter once this is done when you bring your column uh, along with your base plate the base plate will be made uh, will have holes made in them which will exactly fit into your anchor bolts and it can be anchored onto your concrete pedestal <coughs> we'll move on to the next view so if you see this isometric view you'll be appreciating this more this is your column this is your cleat angle this is your web cleat angle this is your concrete pedestal now this is your anchor bolt these anchor bolts are generally outside your connection that is a base plate connection it is near the edges and there has to be a minimum edge distance of 50 to 75 mm or whichever uh, or as per design of your uh, base connection now these anchor bolts have to be embedded inside your concrete pedestal for fixity complete fixity so uh, i have one more uh, software animation for you to see how these anchor bolts will look like really so first now here i have not mentioned the cleat angles i have just given web cleat angles rotate this so i think you can appreciate this more now now this is your this is your col column this is your base plate and you see your base plate has the web cleat angles and not cleat angles even this configuration is possible this all depends on how you design them here you see these are the anchor bolts they come along with the washer now these are bent such type of bolts are called as j bolts so in anchor bolts what happens is there is a shaft and you have to run a bolt inside which expands that shaft outer shaft hollow shaft and embeds the uh, steel members inside concrete this j bolt does not have any mechanical or moving parts it directly anchors inside concrete like a hook so this has uh, better anchorage and there is a very less chance that it will slip out so this is your base plate and the column so when your concrete pedestal and on top of it your column is just simply sitting to transfer the loads mainly axial loads without any bending such a slab uh, such a connection is called as a column slab type slab based connection now again here uh, same uh, rule applies 
for finding out the number of volts that is considering your edge distance and considering your pitches now uh, as all of you know angles are measured using the length this is the uh, arm of the angle this is not the uh, angle length this length will be determined based on how many number of volts you have what is the anchorage you require uh, similarly the same thing applies for your cleat uh, angle also so we'll move on to next one that is gusset piece so moving on with uh, gusset piece so this is a type of connection which is given in case of a column which is uh, experience going to experience bending along with your axial loading it might be due to eccentric loadings or it might be due to moments which are created from the frame which is a pitch or it is an integral part of in this uh, problem i have taken up an ishp 400p and it is a built up column it is not a monolithic column which is being fixed to a concrete base using gusset base then this the gusset plate is of dimension 600 mm depth and uh, 25 mm thickness and uh, base plate is of 25 mm thickness with dimensions 860 by 700 mm the gusset plate is connected to the flange plate using two rows of 20 mm dipoles so the gusset plate that is the plate which connects the extra plate which connects your column to the base plate is called as a gusset plate i'll show it to you in the next diagram it is connected using two rows of 20 mm dipoles and this in turn is connected to the base plate by gusset angle so the gusset plate and the column which is held together by two rows of bolts is connected to the base plate using one more angle uh, that is of 150 by 150 and 12 mm thickness and a nominal web cleat angle is also given 100 mm by 100 mm of 10 mm thickness the bolts used to connect web cleat angle is also 20 mm diameter and the base concrete is of 1.2 meter by 0.9 meter and 500 mm thick so we'll see the figure <coughs> okay so here this is the top view first one is the top view where you see this is your eye section that is this then you have this is your web cleat angle then this one is your gusset plate hatching then this is your gusset angle so I have taken this drawing to be inverted just because it is easy to draw projection lines from this and place your bolts and all in the easy, easy manner now observe here this is the second one is the front elevation this being the column then we have the trapezoidal shape plate that is your gusset plate so this gusset plate is on top of your column and hence the flange is shown as the flange line is shown broken then this gusset plate is connected to the base plate here the base plate here is shown as a hatch using this angle now once you see the isometric view everything becomes clear but this figure has been shown for you to understand or for you to appreciate how it has to be shown in your actual drawings now looking at the side view you will see the depth of the co column then the web cleat angle then you will see the gusset plate as a hatch then you will see the gusset angle then you see the base plate below this you will have your concrete pedestal and also anchor bolts these anchor bolts also can be shown as a J anchor bolt or just a normal anchor bolt so here in the isometric view you can make more sense this is the eye section <coughs> the web cleat angle is uh, hidden anyway you can make out here now this plate is your gusset plate now this gusset plate does not stop here it runs to the entire depth that is till the base plate so this thickness is on 25 mm in this problem if i'm not wrong then this is the flange 
so here we have assumed it as a monolithic section but in your question it is mentioned as a built up column so this flange and web are bonded together either by bolting or welding this flange is connected to the uh, gusset plate using 20 mm dia bolts then this angle is the gusset angle which connects the gusset plate and the column to the base plate i hope everyone has understood this so i'll just repeat this is the column this is the gusset plate gusset plate is connected to your column column flange then this gusset plate along with the which is connected to the column flange is connected in turn into your base plate using the gusset angle then the web of the column is connected to the base plate using the web cleat angle now here uh, we don't call this cleat angle as just a cleat angle in gusset angle, gusset base it is called as a gusset angle it is similar essentially the same but the name is the technical term that is used is gusset angle so all of you should be wary of this now this is regarding the bolted connection of both uh, column bases if you have welded connection so all these interfaces where you have the angles meeting all these things will be welded together this here and here okay so these sections get welded up that is the only difference instead of bolting making bolt holes and showing the bolts now here because of uh, over confinement you can skip this bolt instead of showing the hexagonal bolt and nut you can just draw the line but it will look good if you draw the proper nut and bolt so similarly even in case of your uh, slab base also so this is the column we have the uh, cleat angle this will be entirely welded up that is the uh, weld between the column column flange and the angle arm then the angle arm and the base plate also will be welded together this will be the only difference so welded connection for both the column that is slab base and gusset bases very easy only thing is you will have to draw very precisely the member dimensions in all so i hope everyone has understood this i think i have gusset base also to show here in tecla yeah that's ready so now i have not made any bolt holes or anything here just for you to see how plates can sit together so the pink color element is your column so this is your column then this is your entire base plate assembly where you see this trapezoid trapezoidal shape is your gusset plate this is your angle now i have made it to come out just to show how it is different when i rotate it you will be able to see you observe it does not come out in real life it is only to show they are different members that have made them protrude out now here uh, the dimensioning of anchor bolt has gone wrong so the ang uh, angle and the anchor bolt are coinciding anyway this is a wrong uh, notation you are supposed to give anchor bolt like this that is as we saw in your slab base outside the the uh, outside the joint of column and base plate so you can see this now this is your gusset angle this is your web cleat angle this is the connection of gusset base column gusset base to your concrete pedestal so it is easier to show this anchor bolt along with the uh, nuts and all here are you are if you are uh, okay with showing just anchor bolts as a straight line you can show it with the same way as in the drawing that i have shown here like this so these are the anchors which will expand once the concrete is set and it prevents the bolt from rising up okay so this completes your bracket connection and column base connections thank you